Project Zomboid is a lot. I've had comments about how daunting the game seems and how off-putting it can be, alongside questions from people who are trying and struggling to make it through the first week. So take my hand and we'll get through it together. Before we get into the game, I genuinely recommend the tutorial. It'll run you through the basic mechanics like managing your needs, combat, and how to deal with infection. The game also offers many ways to adjust the difficulty to help you get through your first week. Where you spawn has massive influence, from the relaxed Rosewood and Riverside, the moderate Muldra, or West Point. On top of that, there are abundant settings you can alter, such as outlines when using melee weapons that are found in the menu, or custom sandbox settings to reduce population, enable multi-hit, increase loot spawns or XP, turn off alarms, infection, helicopters, meter events, fog, hunger, thirst, tiredness, water cutoff, electricity cutoff, fire spread, crash damage, and poisoning. What do I recommend? Well, it depends on if you're enjoying the difficulty and if running you through my first seven days helps. But merely outlines reducing population, infection, and multi-hit should all give you good bang for your buck. For the build, I'll keep it simple and focus on the now rather than the future. That means burglar for hot wiring cars and fitness and strength for combat. Arguably, these negative traits are free points for the reasons listed, so here's a rough build. Let's jump in. Alright, so we're in a house. With a solid start, my first priority is to secure the building I spawned in. So kill everything, loot as you go, and close the curtains. Generally, I want food, water, weapons, and a backpack, but I usually grab anything vaguely useful. My spawn secure, I begin working on the immediate area. With high strength, a couple at a time should be no problem. But if you pull a couple too many, you can use fences or open windows to thin them out. As you progress, you'll run into cars and new buildings. I like to fashion a spare safe house, but be aware of alarms. If one goes off, then sprint or drive your little heart out. The range is deceptively huge, and the amount of dead quickly becomes overwhelming. You can also weather it by hiding in houses nearby, but the undead can and will test your defenses. While clearing the area, you might encounter a group you can't deal with head on. Alright, here four is too many, but if we just pull the ones looking at us, it's fine. <laughs> Letting you tackle large groups of enemies. As you fight, make sure to be very aware of your moodles, as they can reduce damage, slow you down, and will get you killed. Take breaks, and use them to assess your condition, breathe, or regain your composure before getting back out there. Oh, the timing. Oh. If you've cleared the area, great. But more than likely, you're going to mess up. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, not good, not good. It could be two Zs, 20, or hundreds. Everyone does it at all levels and in any situation. In this case, you need to lose them. To do this, you must break the line of sight and keep it broken. Cleared buildings or their corners are a good choice, as are the woods or long fences if it's worth the gamble. I'm fine. This is completely under control. So I want to instantly, like the thing you need to deal with for injuries is you need to deal with them, like you need to fix it. So if I patch it up, jump out this window and then walk to my backup base, should be okay. One look and they'll be back onto you. So distance and time are your friends. Safe. The world's your oyster, and I'll run you through the scenarios I encountered in my first week that you can expect. Though you can continue exploring your neighborhood, or focus on leveling skills. <coughs> For me, especially if I'm a burglar, a car is what I want. If you've found a good looking vehicle, check for gas by hitting V next to it. Make sure to check for keys outside the car before breaking in, and only smash the passenger side window to gain access as the drivers will protect you from the assailing dead. Then hit V again to hotwire. Oh, we're good. Running down Zeds damages the car, but sometimes it's worth it. Using the Project Zomboid map project, you can figure out exactly where you are and decide what comes next. As I like hoarding and don't want to move everything twice, it's on to a more secure base. You want to pick something with high walls to restrict the flow of the dead and manageable. Example is Rosewood Prison. 
I'm sure it makes a great base, but... So the fire station is the better choice. I'd recommend pulling them away if you're not confident. All right, we've got a good car and we've got lots of fuel. Let's do some killing. But I like finality. Being able to hotwire makes cars a dime a dozen. You'll now want to secure this base in the same vein as your spawn. So sheets over the glass, more dead slain, and since I intend to stay here for a while, barricades put up. My next priority is guns, as I already have a powerful melee weapon from the survivor house. So you'll want to look at armories, gun stores and police stations for caches, with cop cars containing some here and there. If you're heading to a store, you'll need a sledgehammer to enter, but most others are behind reinforced doors, perfect for a fire axe. I'll use the police station as an example of building looting that can get you killed. We have a one wide doorway with multiple paths able to cut you off. Even the three wide hallway is sketchy. In this instance, clear what you can, but with no guarantee of a way out once we're in, maybe better to yell to draw them out. Since I found the key, I don't need to break the doors down, so I can now loot to my heart's content. If you've moved into the second floor of a building, you should have a backup plan in the form of an escape rope. As Zeds can rip it down, keeping tools nearby to remake it in a pinch is a good idea. Living from my almost full boot, I scoured Rosewood for a trailer. Only to find nothing. My awareness of my surroundings had never been greater. It was starting to feel like my time in the town was limited. Under the threat of power cutting out, I began looking for a generator. Gens can be found in storage lots or garages and require a magazine to operate. So I put my collected weapons and ammo to use gunning down all in the neighborhood while making sure to avoid relying on a head. Making quick work of windows with my high strength. I soon found what I was looking for. Rather than carrying the heavy gen to the ute, I bought the ute to it reducing the time I couldn't defend myself. Now I needed to generate a magazine. Bookshelves and houses could work, but bookstores and libraries are the more guaranteed means. My attempt to gather and shoot the dead risked running into the night, so I used the corners technique with the wooded area to ensure I lost them. Not finding anything in Book Naked, I read carpentry into the night before heading up the school library. Now, I like shooting guns, but in this scenario, you have to ask yourself, why am I doing it? Am I not better off losing them with a long fence and infiltrating quietly? What the, that's a load of bullshit. And lucky again, I could probably find a magazine somewhere in Rosewood. But with the police and fire stations looted, how much else was keeping me here? On the seventh day, I topped up the ute and gas can and hit the road to Muldra. In a larger town, I could find a magazine and places to loot not present in Rosewood. The dead were much thicker on the main road, but I gathered them up again and bolted into the woods. Inside the Mulder bookstore, I found what I was looking for. Oh, yeah, all right, we're in business. And fled to one of my favorite bases in the area, a house surrounded by high fences and situated up against the sparsely populated woods. I like the idea of using my shotgun to purge the area.
Oh no. But they did prove too numerous. They can be clear the last of them by hand. You know, I'll check this house out, why not? This is the one I usually sit up in, but it's a little... Locked. I forced my way through and gunned it to another base I liked. Yep, that'll get me. Oh my! Is there, is there an upstairs room I can sleep in? Sleeping in a janitor's closet on a dingy chair is not how I planned on ending my first week. But rolling with the punches really encapsulates the game. In the future of your runs, you'll experience something very similar to what I've been through. I just hope watching me make my way through my first week makes it less daunting for you. Also, check for helicopters as I had a very interesting eighth day.